YouTube is going the goat house is back recapping NFL week 10 a wild one a lot of upsets a lot of surprise a lot of good games that came down to the wire I'm here just like every week recapping those games also got power rankings and predictions for every game throughout the week extra content on our patreon as well updated playoff predictions updated score predictions updated 2020 NFL mock drafts every single week that is part of one package deal and plenty more you can get patreon.com slash to go to house link in the description and please help us reach that 40k subscriber goal getting close we want to get there before 2020 full nfl content not just in season but in the off season as well click that like button and check us out on twitter at goat house nfl always tweeting during live games there's a link in the description for that twitter um mainly a sunday sunday recap here but i like to talk real quickly about the thursday games uh, this was an interesting one. You know, it was a very entertaining one. Obviously, it came down to the end. Uh, but I felt like the Raiders, you know, played well enough to win this game easier, I should say. Uh, you know, I, I thought that, you know, Phillip Rivers had an off day. And he's lucky it wasn't worse. You know, they got bailed out of a couple interceptions there. Eric Harris, who, you know, has not been playing good. And the Raiders have been trying to figure out how to get another safety in there because he's been giving up big plays. He had a huge game. And it's good to see, like, a small school guy come out of nowhere and start playing good. Uh, more time, that guy can get pretty good. You know, he's getting instinctive, a very good job bringing the quarterback. So that was impressive. Josh Jacobs was impressive. Derek Carr, once again, uh, very safe with the ball, very accurate with the ball, um, very good moving around the pocket, see what he's capable of when you get in a good offensive line. For the Chargers, it's good to see Melvin Gordon going. Melvin Ingram really got going again. He got hurt, got a little scared, but he came back in. Um, but, yeah, they really couldn't stop the run. The Raiders really couldn't stop the run either. You know, in that type of game, Rivers has got to play better. It was a very entertaining game, though. Uh, that the the Raiders definitely played play well enough to win that game. They did win the game, but you know that was the right team that won the game. In my opinion, that's the best way to sum it up. Next game, for the first game for Sunday, we're talking about the Lions and the Bears, twenty to thirteen. Not the most exciting game. There's a bunch of exciting exciting games this week. Not not really this one. Stafford does not play. Jeff Driscoll uh, gets to start for the Lions, and I, I guess the guy was pretty impressive. You know, given that. He was on the Bengals. He uh, They tried to switch him to receiver, and then they just waved him, and then the Lions pick him up for backup quarterback. He kind of gets thrown in against a good defense. He played pretty well, you know, and obviously not well enough to win the game. Uh, early on, it looked like the Lions could win the game, but then the Bears kind of took over, um, just shutting him down, good defensive play. Danny Trevathan goes down with a gruesome injury, but Wachowski comes in and plays very well. Every time we see that guy step in, uh, the linebacker position, he, he, he's he been playing pretty well. And I know Trevathan and Wachowski are both free agents. I think they may go the cheaper route, safer route, um, you know, and let, let Trevathan walk possibly. So that's an interesting thing to keep an eye out for. Uh, but, yeah, the, the Bears really getting the run game going recently. That That's good. That was kind of the key to winning this game and the key to opening some things up, which led to Trubisky actually making some pretty solid throws. Um, still throwing off his back foot a lot, but he 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 uh, you know he made some good throws, some good balls. Uh, Allen Robinson, I thought, made some big time catches for him, um, so that was good. You see, Shaheen doesn't play, and Broniker plays, and he gets in there and scores a touchdown. Something Shaheen just can't do, so that's interesting. But the Lions had a, ch- a chance down the line there, um, but Bear, the Bears pretty much controlled this game the whole time. It's a, it's really a game they should win. You know, I wish Khalil Mack was a little more involved. Obviously, a little under, he's still a great player. Um, it's a little underwhelming, obviously, but uh, yeah, not the most interesting game from the week. Uh, the Ravens and the Bengals, another one. I mean, how much? What, what can we say besides Lamar Jackson just being dominant and, and in that MVP category, stays in that, maybe at the top of that? We'll talk about that later in the week. Um, but I mean, he only needed to throw the ball 17 times to throw the ball very well and, and to run all over the place. I mean. It just it just looks like a cheat. It looks like a cheat code in, in Madden. That's that's what he looks like. You know, it looks like a you, you just created your player and and you made him ninety nine everything. And that's that's what he looks like. Uh, it's just so dominant. You know, so dominant. And I mean that that's my favorite thing in football right now. I'm not a Ravens fan, but I'm a Lamar Jackson fan. A guy that I always enjoyed watching. A very likable guy and a guy that was just doubted. Not only doubted, but was told he can't play the position he wants to play. And this guy is not only proving them wrong, he is in the MVP he's in the MVP conversation. Maybe at the top of it. So he's on another level of proving people wrong. We see guys like Bill Polian saying admitting he's wrong about what he said about Lamar Jackson needing to be a receiver, not a quarterback. Um and it's it's 
it's just awesome to see. It's awesome to see. It's awesome to see that offense getting better and better and what they're able to do. To do. The defense, I know they played the Bengals, but the defense getting better, getting more pressure. Uh, Marcus Peters with another, another pick six there. You know, he's been – He's been stepping up since he came to the Ravens. You know that's that type of guy. Um, you know you start you start to doubt that guy too, and you you, you trade him away, and, and look out. You know he's gonna prove you. So he's gonna prove you wrong. So you gotta like the guys on that team. And you know it, it's it's a fun team to watch. It's a team. You know again, I'm not a Ravens fan, but it's a team you just gotta root for. I mean Lamar Jackson's a guy that just gotta. If you just love football, it's gotta put a smile on your face. You know no matter who. I mean I guess I can't speak for. The Bengals, the Browns, the Steelers fans, but I mean, I, you gotta enjoy this. I mean, it's it's some level here. Um, so very entertaining team, very fun to watch, and they may be the hottest team in football. You know, right there with the Niners, obviously. Um, but the Bengals, they're well on their way to that first overall pick. They saw Joe Burrow play on Saturday, and boy, that was impressive too. And, and they they're they're well on their way to getting them themselves some Joe Burrow. It looks like the Redskins are the team they have to compete with right now because all the other teams are winning. So really it was a good day for the Bengals. Even though they got their ass beat, it was, it was a good day for the Bengals. Joe Mixon actually got going. That was good. Finley, pretty rough for the most part, but he had the glimpses. You know, we've seen some tight throws down the middle of the field. Uh, I just don't like the Bengals' play designs either. There's some, like, third downs, and I've said this early in the year, even with Dalton, like, there was just there was no interest in stretching the field, you know, no interest in stretching the field, no interest of moving the sticks. Just, you know, you're sending Tyler Boyd on a five-yard in route in third and nine or a five-yard out route on third and nine or third and eight, whatever it may be. Is is that the, is the play design is that bad? Like, are we gonna have are they gonna have to fire their coach after one year, or is it is it are they tanking on that type of level? I I can't couldn't tell you. I know they're beat up in spots. I know they don't have the correct talent on offense, but there's some things that are just Really, no excuses for it, honestly. Bills and Browns. I'm three and one picking against the Bills this year, and everybody says I pick up against the Bills every week. For some, I think it's Bills fans saying that. Picked against them four times, and I'm three and one in that Titans game. I still think the Titans should have won that game. Uh, but yeah, the Browns. I mean, this game should not have been this close. I mean, the Browns completely outplayed the Bills. You got to give the Bills credit on their defense, their red zone defense. Guys like Tremaine Edmonds stepping up. Matt Milano, you know that linebacker duo is very good. Uh, Tre'Davious White was great in the red zone. Um, but the Browns were able to move the field, move the ball down the field, just not executing the red zone. Some of the worst goal line play calling ever seen. I mean, at one point they had 11 plays from the from inside the two yard line, and they only got a field goal off it. The first time they had eight plays because they got an automatic first down and got no points. Uh, the next time, obviously, they ran three plays, just no play action, um, just goal line fades and, and pitches, and it was a joke. It was a complete joke. Uh, and they got safety. Baker's got to get rid of that ball. I mean, it's just, they went full Browns, but they still won the game. And that's a concern for the Bills. But it's been the concern for the Bills' offense. You know, it, it, they they have to. I mean, Josh Allen throws the ball 41 times. And, and you got 16 points against the Browns' defense. Um, you know, and the Browns' defense has not been that good. You know, Miles Garrett, pretty good. Denzel Ward starting to get his groove back, looking pretty good. But, uh, I mean, you can you should be able to move the ball better against this team. The Bills just did not have enough, and you know, and they can't. It seems like they can't convert those third and shorts, the fourth and shorts. Um, yeah, I remember they had a third and three at one point. And they just gunned the ball downfield, like very low percentage play. It's just I just don't get it. Second and three, I love the play. I love that play, even if it's incomplete. Third and three, not so much. Um, you know, they're forced to go for on fourth down a couple times. They can't get it. You know, they're allowing some pressure. It's either he has all day or they're allowing instant pressure. It's weird. I mean, same thing with the Browns. Um, but the Browns, you know, they're capable of, of winning these games. They just got to be more consistent. They can't, they can't blow it. You know, they're insisting on that shovel pass that almost blew the game, and it's just a negative play every time. They tried that at the goal line too. They tried it against the Patriots. He pitched it right to uh, Lawrence Guy, I think it was. Uh, I mean, it's just not working this year. It's not working. So stop doing it. So Freddie Kitchens should be on the hot seat, even though they just won, because some of this play calling is atrocious. Atrocious. It's just, it's just terrible. But they still managed to win the game. It was a great. Late drive, they get Jarvis Landry really involved, um, you know, and, and Baker looks out that last drive. So, uh, impressive win. It's a win they definitely needed. Uh, I was talking weeks ago that this was a big game for the year because these two teams, believe it or not, you know, now I'm starting to doubt it a little bit because the Browns lost last week to the Broncos. But the Browns, they're not going to win out. But looking at their schedule, it looks like it's a it's a possible thing they can win out. It's really it really is like the schedule's that soft. Same with the Bills. Um, so this was actually a big game. Uh, I have doubts on both teams still, but the AFC, um, 
I have Dallas in the AFC for the most. I mean, there's other teams after this week are sneaking up there to 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 battle with these two teams. Um, so it's interesting, but the Bills got to get something going on offense. I mean, it's the Bills are like the the Bears. I, I compare both. I mean, the Bills I think are better, but I mean, they're like the same team right now. It's just ridiculous. The Chiefs and the Titans, that other team that could sneak up for that wild card spot, could be the Titans after this big time win. I mean, at the end of the day, you know something. Just looking at going going back and like kind of look over the games again, real cool, just real quick. You know, big plays of the games, um, and just something I just see in the Titans this game was just a lot of energy. You know, after after getting big time scores and on, whether it's defense or offense, and these it seems like the players are really coming together. You know, I think you know I think it kind of changed things when they put Tannehill in there because Mariota was a. I mean, it's a very likable guy by the by the fans and the players. So it took some time to get used to Tannehill, and these guys are coming together as a team. And this is this is a momentum. This is a season changing game right here. I'm not gonna say, that, you know, they actually have a real tough schedule the rest of the way. I'm not gonna say they're gonna go out and just demolish a bunch of teams because of that. But this could actually turn the season around. This type of game right here. Uh, but this was a very, very, very entertaining game. It was big play. I, I never seen anything like it, honestly. It was big play after big play after big play. We saw the Chiefs and the Rams play last year. It was kind of like that. You know, there wasn't as much scoring, but there was there was more of just big plays. It's not like all right, here's a five yard run. We'll get a ten yard pass. And no, it's like big time play. Even on defense, see the the Titans. Um, they put David. I mean, the Titans have an unlimited amount of linebackers. They draft a great draft pick, David Long, out of West Virginia. I love that draft pick. He comes in, forces a fumble, uh, and and they pick it up, running for six. I mean, the Chiefs got big plays, and Mahomes making ridiculous throws. Tyree kills, breaking a bunch of tackles, slipping you know faster than everybody, going for six. Miko Hardman just way too fast. Um, you know that looked like the fastest play. I don't know what the miles per hour was. I, I don't think it was the fastest year, but to me, that Miko Hardman play that looked like the fastest. A man has run in the NFL like ever, and he—that's a big play. He goes and scores. Then you got Derrick Henry. You know that's a Derrick Henry I remember from last year. I've been waiting for that. I've been waiting for that. That guy's a straight beast, and I, I just kind of missed it this year. There it is. He's ripping off huge runs. They cannot stop him. And at the end of the game, Tannehill ripping off runs. Tannehill throwing a deep ball. Um, you know, beautiful deep ball for a touchdown. Stepping up in the pocket, letting it sling. Tannehill running and breaking tackles for the goal line. I mean. It's it was just big play after big play. The the balls on Tannehill at the end of the game, you gotta love it. You gotta respect the guy, and it could be a game changing moment for them. Uh, the, the Chiefs. It's surprising they lost this game. Kind of felt like they had it. You know, it's just the one that's gonna hurt if you're a Chiefs you know a Chiefs fan is um, you know this game for the year. But you know during during the game, you know that Damian Williams fumble. Uh, for six is the, is the dagger right there. Even though they kind of had the game won after that, and they had the block. Yeah, you had the block field goal at the end, um, which people are saying. Uh, there was, it should have been offsides or whatever. And at first glance, you know, live look, I actually thought he was offsides. But if you go back and look, uh, yeah, there's no question. The center goes ahead and move. He he moves and he moves the ball, and and, um, and they did a good job of jumping that. So definitely a good call by the refs. It was to me, it was not offsides. Uh, but I yeah, I, I guess I can understand people frustrated with that. You know, after the live look, but entertaining game you know entertaining game and just like I said what happened with the Titans there like the big plays they were making the the big plays the offense made Tannehill made to win the game got the team together got excited and they end the game with a block field goal like just the momentum and the energy um, I've seen it before many times like that is a mid-season changer game ch- season changer I should say so that that's interesting Titans do have a very tough schedule I've noticed though uh, going forward so We'll see. Interesting game, though. The Chiefs winning games with Mac, Matt Moore or making it close against a good Packers team, and then they go and lose with Mahomes. Uh, I mean, Mahomes is obviously the best quarter, the better quarterback, so that's, that's not what I'm trying to say, but it's just interesting. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, Falcons 26, Saints 9. Is that right? Did the graphics guy messed this up? No, that's right. The Falcons beat the Saints in New Orleans Mainly because of their defense. Yes, that is right. They're, and they stepped up on offense. But their defense in New Orleans won the game. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Nobody predicted this. Nobody. I mean, it's... I, I, I don't even know what to say. I, don't, I can't believe this game happened like this. Um, you know, what went wrong for the Saints on offense? You know, early, I think for most of the game... And we saw, like, pass rush all game. And the Falcons got an insane amount of pressure um, at the end of the game... I mean, they were just beating the offensive line of the Saints. They were just beating them off the ball. They were just outdueling them. Um, but for the most part in the game, I thought Breeze had time. You know, early in the game, you know, even in the third quarter, I thought he had time. I thought he wasn't getting rid of the ball. 
Um, and he was taking sacks, stepping into sacks, and then a lot of times he wasn't, you know, he would refuse to throw the ball downfield. There was a lot of checkdowns to Kamara, and Kamara wasn't really on his game, too. I mean, they had a touchdown early on they would have got, but Kamara fell down um, and it forced a sack, and the sack only happened because he fell down. It's only like that play call where it's only to Kamara, unless that's not the play design, unless, uh, you know, Bree's just insisting on the checkdown. We even see underneath throws. I mean, it's, you know, Drew, Drew Brees is the guy, no no doubt, but it's just interesting to think about if Teddy Bridgewater played this game, you know, what would have happened? I know it was a big win, but I think it would have been changed and, you know, Kamara couldn't get anything going. Um, it was just a weird game. But, yeah, later in the game, the Falcons just got some insane pressure, and it's weird because they changed all their, their – the coaching staff just changed which groups they're coaching, and then Dan Quinn steps down from actually running the defense first game, and bam. Best defensive performance of the year for them. It's not even close. Uh, interesting. Well, maybe this will keep up. I don't know if Falcons fans want that unless they win out. But I don't know if they're going to win out. Um, you know, because I don't think you, I don't think you get in the playoffs uh, with nine and seven in the NFC anyways. So or you could, but um, you know, it's it's kind of a Falcons move. Start to win some games now. But yeah, the pass rush was ridiculous. Uh, multiple different guys there. And you see Marshawn Latimer get, get goes down, he gets hurt, and you see the difference. You know he's been one of the top corners of football this year, and it's kind of proof there because he was making some big time plays earlier. Love that play where he, Julio caught it, and he uh, Latimer makes a very quick break, uh, buzzes the feet, get up, and just pops him, and he drops the ball. Love love that type of play. Love seeing that from the corner. You don't see that a lot anymore. He gets hurt though, and you see the difference when he is out, and that could be a problem for this week too. Um, if he's out, he's considered week to week. Marshawn Latimer, that is. And they're playing the Bucks. Last time they played the Bucks, Mike Evans was shut down. He shut him down, zero catches. And Mike Evans is heating up now, so that could be a problem. That that is very interesting. Something to monitor. Um, but this was surprising. This was very surprising. The Saints always beat the Falcons, especially at home when the Falcons are really good. And this, I mean, it is weird, weird. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it was weird. Just not a, did not expect that one. Uh, the Giants twenty-seven, the Jets thirty-four. Um, yeah, I did not expect the Jets to put up 34 points in this one. So credit to them. Darnold stepped up compared to the last few games. Uh, and they, they figured it out late, mainly defensively. You know, they had their big time turnovers defensively. Daniel Jones just cannot hang out of the ball. It's just so easy to take the ball away from him. Jamal Adams knows it. He went up there and straight took the ball from him and went and scored. That was one of the best plays of the year. And, and even that, uh, that short yard stop, uh, the, the Giants broke the huddle and instantly got on the ball. And then Jamal Adams just jumps the pile and just brings just all upper body, all upper body, just makes the makes the play. I mean, that is that guy's a beast. I mean, that's just a that's just one of the top safeties in football, no doubt. Uh, and the Jets putting up thirty four points. So I know Jamal Adams scored. I know uh, they had another another uh, strip sack, uh, but they stepped up. They stepped up when they needed to. Uh, and yeah, the Giants. I guess the, the Daniel Daniel Jones. That's just a legitimate concern. I mean, the guy can throw the ball. He can throw the ball better than anybody expected. Uh, but can you fix the fumbling issue? Can you fix it? Like they're gonna have to. Their full focus right now will be on offensive line. You know they need help in defensive spots, but they have no choice if they if they think Daniel Jones is the guy for the future, and they will. They just drafted him. They are going to they are gonna try to build the best offensive line they possibly can build. That is first, and I guess that's what they should do. But I mean, if you have to drop everything to do that, that I think that's a problem. But that's what they will do, and I guess if. It, I guess that's what they have to do, but it's it's tough uh, because that guy cannot hang on to the ball. He he just cannot. It's 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 absurd. Uh, and I love to see Darius Slayton getting going. You know, just kind of a speed guy at Auburn. Made some plays here and there. Had a big time um, drop ball problem. He kept dropping the ball at Auburn, uh, but he's been big time. You know, speed kills. Speed and quickness absolutely kills in today's NFL. And you see him get off the line of scrimmage and just. Um, you know, there's nothing really fancy. I mean, here and there, yeah, he has a pretty good routes, but it's just mainly just he just bolts uh, to where the ball is going to be, and he's gone. Uh, very impressive. Golden Tate had a great game. Just all that. You know, Daniel Jones threw some good balls too, and just all that, and they just can't win the game against the Jets. Um, and um, credit to the Jets, credit to their defense. Sam Darnold stepped up. It's credit to their offense. And they, they put the game away late. Um, you, you see there's about, I think, the whole fourth quarter, they shut down the Giants for the most part. Uh, and then they score a touchdown, kick a field goal to get a seven-point lead, and that's just all there was to it in the fourth quarter. So that 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 fourth quarter was impressive for them. Cardinals and Bucks, pretty wild game, back and forth. It felt like the it was back and forth, but it kind of felt like the Bucks had it most of the way. Uh, and right off the gate, Winston throws a pick. I mean, Jesus, gonna start right away. 
Uh, and that made me concerned about my Bucks pick because I picked the Bucks. Every time I pick the Bucks, Winston kind of blows it. Um, you know, the second interception wasn't all of his fault. He it it was a very very tight window, risky throw. So it could be the reason, but it did hit the receiver's hands. Interception. Um, you know, Kyler had a late interception that that was rough. Uh, but then Ronald Jones, you know, fumbled on his own late too. I mean, it was kind of just back and forth with the turnovers, and I thought that for sure costed them. Um, you know, Levante David came up with a with a big big time strip. Um, so it was kind of just back and forth in that way. Uh, but then the offense, you know, making some good plays. You see this Cardinals offense, so high power in both offenses. Uh, you got Christian Kirk going. Larry Fitzgerald had a ridiculous catch. You see Isabella making another big play. Um, you know, it, it's good to see. And, and the same thing with the Bucks. You know, they get everybody involved, everybody going. You know, you, minus the, the bad fumble, Ronald Jones played a pretty darn good game, breaking tackles, hitting the hole pretty hard, uh, which was kind of been his problem, you know, seeing the hole and hitting the hole very quickly. Uh, so it's good to see that. But they both teams made clutch plays on defense. You know, the Bucks had a good – uh, drive there towards the end. Uh, you know, the thing about Winston is he is he's just not going to throw the ball away and he's not going to look for the check down. In a way, you kind of got to respect it. You really do. This guy just wants to be the best. He wants to go out and make the big play. He wants to win. And you have to respect the guy for that. Uh, he makes so many risky throws, which ends up being picks, or sometimes he fits in a tight window. And it's a crazy catch or crazy catch and throw. We saw OJ Howard um, on one of them. It's just, it, it's, it's very risky, and it's the reason he throws a bunch of picks. Um, he's probably got to fix that, but it, it's in a way, like, this game kind of, it's kind of made me respect him a little more. You know, the guy just wants it. He wants it more than everybody else, and he got it done in this game. They got a big game against the Saints uh, next game. Looking forward to that game, actually. It's going to be an interesting game. Uh, so the Bucks get a good win there. Cardinals, another tough one. Uh, the Dolphins and the Colts, the Dolphins win another one. Uh, and they're not, you know, for now, not in the Joe Burrow sweepstakes, I guess. Um, you know, I know no Brissett, and it sounded like early in the week he was going to play, and he could play. So that was unfortunate because if he would have played, uh, he, I mean, if he didn't get hurt in the first, uh, the last week against the Steelers, I think they would have won. If he, and if he played this game, I think they would have won. So it's two losses just like that. But this is even so, you know, it's a game the Colts got to win. And, I mean, it started early, though. I mean, that Ebron, I still think – I thought that was a touchdown, honestly. I mean, that's that's tough. It's a tough call, so I can't really blame the refs. Uh, but Ebron catches it, firm possession, and then two feet go down, and and then it's stripped out and called a pick. I, I that's, that was tough for me. You know, when a guy catches it and toe taps it, you know, on, on the edge of the end zone, and it just like real quick and just falls out of bounds. It's a catch. So I don't get why that's not. Uh, it, it's it's a tough one though. So I can't really blame anybody. But that was. That was the first drive of the game, and that's the change. That's the game changer right there. Uh, that's the game changer. You know, uh, Ebron's gonna hang on to the ball, and then it goes to the last. It goes. It goes to the last drive where Ebron runs short of the sticks, uh, fourth down. You know, right near, right near the end zone. Like he, you got to run past the sticks there. So, in a way, Ebron. I, I think highly of the guy, but it kind of cost him a little bit. But really, Hoyer throughout the game just was off. Uh, really off, so I mean that really kind of cost them in the end. And the problem was, yeah, I, I thought they were going to win this game anyways because the running game. You know, I thought they were going to really get going. Uh, but for the problem was they were pretty much down the whole game, so they had to open up and try to throw the ball. So that was kind of the problem. That start, that that start killed everything. You know, <laughs> throwing that pick and then, which was you know, either way for me. Uh, but credit to the Dolphins. The only stuff that went in years of the defenses was defense was very impressive, very very impressive. Uh, I know they played Hoyer, but I mean, he played better last week, you know. So the the the, the Dolphins defense really really stepped up, um, and, and was impressive, and, and they were clutch when they needed to be on offense, you know. Just not a whole bunch, you know, not the most exciting game, I guess, at the end where the Colts were knocking on the door there. But uh, yeah, that that's a tough stretch for the Colts there, losing two straight and having your quarterback hurt. I mean, he has to play next week. Did they? It sounded like early in the week he was going to play. It re- it really did. Um, and my, my fantasy team got screwed over too because I had Brady and I had Brissett for one reason only for the bye week of the Patriots because I saw I looked at it, they put the Dolphins and then I saw that Brissett was going to be hurt and I tried to pick up Jameis Winston. He was available. The guy I was playing had a better waiver than me. He got Jameis Winston. I had no choice but to go Brian Hoyer and it literally lost me the week, Winston versus Hoyer there. So that, that's unfortunate. Uh, so unfortunate stretch for the Colts there too. The Panthers in the Packers in the snow. You don't want to play the Packers in the snow. Um, very interesting game. Uh, pretty entertaining game. You know, I didn't really agree with the officiating at all in this game. 
Uh, and it and it did feel honestly, it did feel kind of one sided. Uh, but at the end of the day, with all that, which it could have changed the game, um, it, the Packers still played well enough to win the game. I thought they outplayed the Panthers, even though it was a good game. Um, you know, they made the big time plays on offense. Rodgers made the big plays. Aaron Jones has been getting better and better. The guy's super impressive. The offensive line played much better. There's a lot of plays on Rodgers at all day. They were they were off last week. Um, I think it was just a little. They were a little beat up from the week before. Still, um, you know, going into the Chargers game, I should say, so that they got um, they got back and they got situated for this game. So that was good. Uh, defensively, that that defensively, I think there's just guys not getting enough credit. You know, Zadarius Smith. I've been saying all year. I mean, he's my he's my front runner for defensive player of the year. I don't think he's going to win it, but I think the guy's been the best defensive player in football. He's been unreal. I mean, the amount of pressures and QB hurries he's had. In this game alone, I mean, in every game, but in this game was absolutely absurd. Like, he was after the quarterback. He was after Kyle Allen. Every play, uh, forcing him to move around and make hard throws. Uh, and he he was everywhere. And Adrian Amos, I mean, doesn't get enough credit for this game. He played a great game, making big-time plays. Um, you know, I mean, they had, they had that interception they got in the end zone, you know, which I think was forced by Amos. Uh, was 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 the game, the game changer there. So that was big time. Roughing the passer call, I didn't really agree with. And I, yeah, I guess that could have changed the game, but at the end, and it was a terrible call. Um, but at the end of the day, I you know I thought the Packers played well enough to win. You know, my my problem is, and we've seen it across the 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 league, like multiple different teams throughout the year, is where teams do not outplay their opponent, but they still win because of sometimes a single call or sometimes multiple calls. I get so pissed no matter who the team is. And we've seen multiple different teams win on that when they did not play well enough to win, and it was clear to me. And so I didn't like the officiating in this game, but the Packers, they played well enough to win. I thought they outplayed the Panthers even though it was pretty close. Um, you know, I didn't agree with the Panthers going for two at that one point, obviously. Uh, it was 24-10. They score. I didn't like going for two. I just didn't like it, you know, because if they would have scored at the end, they would have had to go for two again, you know, so I, I didn't like that at all. I think they assumed the Packers were going to get some points again. I don't like that, uh, but, I, you know, Kyle Allen made his mistakes, obviously, and he has some things to clean up, but I, I see a very good quarterback. You know, sometimes you kind of get to see it, even when he makes the bad throws. I mean, this guy has the tools. He has, he has the, the mechanics, the footwork, the – you know, everything's pretty. You know, the the throwing motion, um, the 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 ball, the the velocity on the ball, everything looks good. And uh, I mean, he was one of my deep sleepers in the draft because a few years ago, because he didn't get much of a chance in college, he really didn't. And he was a number one recruit for a reason. Uh, back coming out of high school, and, and the guy can throw. The guy can throw. Um, he's got a bright future, and that's why the Panthers will roll with him. I mean, the kid is – I mean, you see him make some tight window throws. You've seen him move up and out of the pocket the correct time, make throws on the run. He's got Darius Smith chasing after him every play. Um, so I'm impressed with him. Even though there was moments that kind of costed them in this game uh, and that he needs to clean up, I am not worried. You know, there's other quarterbacks that can make the same mistakes, and there's other things I see, the way they move in the pocket, you know, just – there's little things like that, and that is where the ginormous difference is between Kyle Allen and those other quarterbacks. He has a future. The guy has a future. Um, that last drive of the game, uh, yeah, McCaffrey, that was an interesting one. Interesting call. Yeah, I'm not too mad at it. You got McCaffrey, you know, it's an interesting call. You know, since they didn't get it, I guess people are going to say it was a bad call. I don't really mind it, and really he might have got in. I don't, I don't have a problem at all with them keeping the – the call on, on the field because you just don't get a good angle. I don't really have a problem with that. It, um, but at the, I'm still going to say he may have got in. We really just don't know. It, it looked like, you know, vi- we basically had to visualize his body length and where he was. It kind of looked like he might have been, but that's just assumption. Uh, so that's why I have no problem with it. What I do know is he was never down. I know you have to blow the whistle at some point, but I do know he was never down because he was on top of bodies. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, I didn't like the play before that. They called an offsides on Preston Smith, a very late call. Um, I didn't think he was. And maybe it was a makeup call, and that, that's kind of where my problem is with the refs. They, it's pretty clear makeup call sometimes. Uh, but that was a very entertaining game. Uh, good to see a game in the snow. It just looks cool when you know you see them playing in the snow there, uh, and both teams playing pretty well in the snow too. The Rams and the Steelers, seventeen to twelve. Keep keep picking against the Steelers. They keep pulling these games off. Uh, very impressive. Uh, if you watch my score predictions, you know even though I pick the Rams, I always give matchups. If I te- if I think the other team has a chance to win, I give I give like kind of a matchup or reasoning uh, why they can do it. And even though I pick the Rams, I, I kind of explain the Steelers. You know the front seven against this weak Rams offensive line really could change the game, and that would be the reason they win. And it kind and it was there. And I think my score prediction was twenty three seventeen. So I kind of got the Steelers offense uh, right where they were. 
Uh, mainly a defense game. It's either it's weird to see the Rams in defensive games. Um, but yeah, credit to Sears front seven, which helps the secondary play better, which is playing way better than expected this year. Joe Hayden looks like a younger Joe Hayden. Minka Fitzpatrick is everywhere. Um, very impressive to see him play a true safety position and play the way he's playing. Instincts, very high. And that's that's why he had a first-round grade and still did when the Sears traded for him. So uh, super impressive he's been. Um, you know, they, they made some clutch plays when they needed to. Uh, I mean, bo- both pass rushes were great. Aaron Donald played a great game. Clay Matthews getting after the quarterback. Um, seemed like Fowler was everywhere again, too. Uh, so a defensive game, uh, you know, the Rams just couldn't even, you know, I, I've been saying the offensive line's a problem. I said it before the year, the offensive line's going to be a problem. Um, but my problem right now is, like, what is wrong with this Rams offense? Not in terms of the offensive line, not in terms of the golf under pressure, but really the play calling and the play designs, you know, it doesn't, it's not the same as last. I guess it's not the same as execution as last year, but I guess it maybe could be the same. And teams are kind of just figuring it out. They're figuring out McVay. They're figuring out golf. They're figuring out this team, and it's just not going well. They they got a prime time game unless they flex it out against the Bears this week. Is they gonna be another defensive game? I guess. Uh, very interesting. The Steelers. Steelers are battling for that wild card spot. Crazy. And uh, credit to that defense. That defense is is balling. Uh, next game, the Vikings and the Cowboys. I I doubted my Vikings this week. I doubted them. Um, you know, after last week, uh, in the, a game they they should have won in so many ways, and that that, that game's gonna drive me nuts. The Chiefs game, they they I mean they outplayed the Chiefs. They should have won in so many ways. They kind of choked it away. Um, so that one's tough still. But then going into this game, another away game. On top of that being a prime time game, which the Vikings never win. When people say Kirk Cousins never wins, um, and then. You have Adam Thielen out, so it's pretty easy for the defense to double up digs and stack the box. Uh, and then you have Linval Joseph out, their nose tackle. A guy who's been a beast stopping the run, so I'm figuring Zeke's going to have a pretty good day. And you have Trey Waynes out, which that kind of showed. Mike Hughes had to step up outside corner. He's been playing slot, came back from an ACL injury. Um, so that was a rough one for him. Um, not going to put too much on him. I still like his potential for the for the future. Uh, needs more reps outside. I thought Holton Hill should have played more for the Vikings at corner. But all that being said... I thought the Cowboys, I didn't think they were going to win big. I just thought it would be a, somewhat of an easy win, and they could have won this game. But with all those guys out, being home prime time, it's a game you got to win. You know, with Thielen being out, with Linval Joseph being out, um, Trey Waynes was more of a factor, him being out. But we even take that one away because going into the game, more of the impact, um, you know, inactives are Thielen, Thielen and Linval Joseph. With those guys being out, you got to take advantage, and you got to win the game. I, I mean, uh, it was pretty simple. They should have doubled up. I mean, they did for the most part. You know, the plays that Diggs did made, he had one guy on him. You can't double a guy every game. We saw them with the corner on him, and they had a safety over the top for the most part. And they stacked the box, but I guess it's credit to the Vikings kind of throwing them off because early they were they were kind of just checking down on the road. They were running slip screens, throwing the, throw the, checking down on the running back, and Dalvin Cook was just going wild and, and then running the Madison. He's going wild. So they're, early on they were running and getting the ball to the running back when you, when you least expected it. So it kind of they kind of game plan. They saw what the Chiefs would do them, and they weren't going to let the Cowboys do that to them uh, again. And they kind of worked around that, and then they started getting obvious with it. That's the problem with the Vikings. You know, people are blown away with this offense at times, and it does. It looks like a top tier offense. You know, when they got the first two touchdowns, uh, and then they get a little too comfortable. I think Zimmer trusts his defense a little too much at times too, and, and then they start getting obvious with running the ball. So they have to have the game close to look really good on offense. It's kind of what it is, and that's kind of how the Vikings have always been. That's just how they're going to be, you know. Um, but yeah, credit to them early on getting those 14 points right away. Delvin Cook, Alexander Madison running very hard. Uh, C.J. Ham does not get enough credit. I mean, we what you check out, we could be talking about one of the best fullbacks in the league, C.J. Ham. I mean, this guy is bullying people, taking key guys out. And a big reason why Delvin Cook and Alexander Madison can have a day. Uh, and then Kyle Rudolph had himself a day. They did a good job mixing the tight ends, too. Because once the Cowboys kind of expected to run, they were getting Irv Smith going. They were getting Rudy going in the red zone. So they were pretty smart. You know, they got really conservative at times, which they always do. So I hated that. But uh, for the most part, they were very smart with the game plan. And the reason why they put up 28 points. Um, and the Cowboys really couldn't they couldn't do much. They were getting tired uh, towards the end with the, the Vikings running the ball. But then the flip side, Dak Prescott had a monster game. Who had, who had an even better, a bigger game was Amari Cooper. I mean, toe-tap Cooper. I mean, the, the ability to hang on to that ball and just do it over and over and over again on third and long situations, the Cowboys are very, very good. We've seen them their 50% success rate on third down and offense going into the game, and they they were better than that last night. That is that is big time. You know, that's big time. That's super impressive. But 
Um, you know, they still they still can't pull it off. That's the tough part. Uh, you know, the Vikings were, yeah, sometimes the Vikings were getting good pressure, I guess, more than other teams would. Um, but the, for the most part, Dak was very good running on the run, making some good throws in crucial situations. Zeke just could not get going. Um, you know, without Linval Joseph on the defensive side, I was just surprised by that. Just couldn't get going. He looks like he, you know, he doesn't look as quick, as fast, as shifty as he did the last few years either. Like, he just, it's got to be a hole, and he's got to be able to run straight. It's not, it's not been looking good, really. I mean, he's had his games, last few games, been breaking some tackles, looked pretty, but uh, it doesn't look like the same Zeke, honestly. Games like this where they need him, um, it, it's just, you know, it, they, he's got to get going. You just can't get going. And you see Zeke versus Dalvin Cook supposed to be this, like, big-time um, you know, top tier running back battle, and it's really not even close. And not just by the statistics of this game, it's just you see the different running styles, you see the abilities, and it's really, it's really not close. Um, and that's why I've kind of always been a believer of what I'm about to say. You know, I you take a you draft a quarterback every four, or run, excuse me, not quarterback, running back every four or so years, and you really shouldn't extend them unless they got fresh legs. Still, you know, it depends on how much of a load you get. I mean, Zeke's still a top tier running back, but. Um, you know, you need more from him. You need more from him, and it's come up. You know, early in the year, the last few games he's been better, except this game. Um, and they and they really and they kind of blew the play calling was good for the most part during this game until the end. You know, they they went to Zeke twice. The Vikings shut them down, uh, and then and then they tried they tried to throw to Zeke and a hell of a play once again by Eric Hendricks. He's done that all year. Third down, fourth down, pass deflections. He's at the top of the league in pass deflections as a middle linebacker. That guy's having a career year. Came up clutch for them there. Um, so, so this was a very entertaining game. Very entertaining game there. Down to the wire. And then Tavon Austin calls for a fair catch when I think he actually had a lane for at least very good yardage. Could have been more. Um, and then the Hail Mary at the end. Something I like to point out is the Vikings put their biggest safety back there. Jerron Curse, the guy's 6'4", and he goes up and make, makes, a, makes a catch. And why is that interesting? It's because teams continue at every level. You see it even at high school football, high school football, college football, NFL. Teams can, in that situation continue to put a receiver or just a big guy between the Patriots but Gronk back there. They can they outsmart themselves. They think a receiver is really going to jump ball. But you're on defense. You're on defense. Receivers are coming down the field. Tight ends are coming down the field. And, and that's how you do it. You put your biggest safety back there. The guy, that actually could have been a touchdown. You know, Jarwin was open. He was waiting for the ball. Curse jumps higher and him, makes a play. Uh, and teams continue to be stupid about that. It's something that all you know always got to me when when teams put receivers. You have safeties for a reason. Those guys play safety for a reason. Um, so I, I was glad they put them back there. But very interesting game. You know, as a Vikings fan, you know it's a very good win with those guys out. You know, it's a very good win. I doubted them in this game. Um, you know, but it's it was a pretty frustrating game. Is what I'm getting. At. It was kind of, it was kind of frustrating. They could have put them away a few times. You know, I, I thought. Um, we find the Vikings finally stopped them on defense. The Neil Hunter got a sack in this millisecond, and they call, you know, the the holding on Harrison Smith. Right when they called that, I'm like, Harrison Smith never gets holding. And they see the replay, and you got Tony Dungy tweeting about how bad it was. Who actually does the game? You know, pregame, halftime. Um, so that was bad. Um, that 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 kind of made it more frustrating for me. On top of the defense, the corner play being just just terrible. The corner play, we got a situation there. Hopefully they get Trey Wayne's back. Holton Hill needs to play more. I think he could be their best corner, honestly. It's it's weird. Um, but we'll but we'll see. Um, Mike Hughes targeted 17 times, so that, that was that was rough. But I mean, what's gonna happen when a guy coming off an ACL tear and it's been playing slot corner, getting thrown out to outside? I mean, what's what's gonna happen if you get targeted 17? You know, I wish he played better. Um, and he could have had a pick. Uh, Mackenzie Alexander dropped the pick, and Anthony Harris dropped the pick. So, I mean, the Vikings, it continues to happen that way, too, which frustrates me. They cannot get those turnovers. They just can't do it. Uh, last week against the Chiefs, they strip sack Matt Moore two different times to win the game. They could not come up with the ball. It's great blitz calls, great pressure. You, they just continue to drop interceptions, force fumbles, and not get them. And, and I mean, that, it, it changes it from game over to making things interesting and possibly losing. So things like that frustrate me, but it, it was a good win. I didn't expect them to win uh, being on the road, prime time, and with all those guys out. But And it wasn't because of Kirk. I wasn't down in Kirk. I think that that record, Kirk's prime time record, is nonsense. They over they overused that too much. He played for the Redskins for a while on top of it. When the Redskins, look at the talent the Redskins had compared to the talent the Vikings have. It's a totally different team. Uh, and, and the Vikings kind of always just blew up those prime time away games, you know, for for the longest time. So I don't blame Kirk at all. And people just thought it was a hundred percent fact that they were going to lose because of Kirk Cousins in prime time. It's it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, so 
it was a good win. It was a good win. The Cowboys got to pull that one off, especially with the, with the guys the Vikings had off. So that's, that's unfortunate for them. But I still like I like their offense. I like the third down success is super impressive. That's that's my takeaway from the Cowboys. That is super impressive. Uh, but that's going to do it for this one. We're back every single week with this video. Appreciate you guys watching. Power rankings tomorrow. Those should be very interesting with uh, a lot of these games. on so the Saints losing, what is that going to do? Uh, then we got predictions the rest of the week. More content on the Patreon. All kinds of action. I love it. I absolutely love doing this. So appreciate you guys for being here. Appreciate you. If you subscribe, if you don't, please help us get to that 40K goal. That's going to do it, though. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.